A Texas death row inmate by the name of Ray Jasper has written an open letter uh, before he's set to be executed in March of 2014. And in the letter, you learn a lot about him, and he is one of the rare cases where it seems like the prison system has actually rehabilitated someone, but unfortunately, he will be executed regardless. Now, um, he was convicted uh, after participating in a robbery in 1998 and murdering um, a, a record studio owner by the name of David Alejandro. Alejandro. So uh, there he is, and you read his 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 piece, you know, his letter, his open letter, and it's kind of incredible just how knowledgeable he is. You know, he quotes Thoreau, Martin Luther King Jr., and he talks about a lot of the viruses that are within our justice system. So let me give you a little taste. Okay, first a point of clarity: uh, he didn't do the killing, right? Now he was part of that crime, so. Um, if you're a party to that crime in Texas, you can still get the death penalty. He, in fact, he says that there are 50 guys on death row in Texas who didn't actually do the killing. Now, in his case, uh, his accomplice already confessed and and did a pl uh, plea deal, so he would get a life sentence, saying, "Yeah, I shot the guy." Okay, so we know, in fact, he didn't shoot the guy, but he was part of the crime. And you don't just get death penalty in Texas for. Uh, murder, you get it for felony murder, okay? Mm -hmm. That means if you shoot someone and don't take any money from him, you won't get death sentence. But if you take a nickel from him, the, well, you just did felony murder, even though you're not the one who did the shooting, you still get a death sentence. Yes, exactly. So um, here's what he had to say. Um, he talks about empathy a lot throughout uh, his letter, and I thought that was interesting. Empathy breeds proper judgment. Sympathy breeds sorrow. Contempt breeds arrogance. Neither are proper judgments because they're based on emotions. That's why two people can look at the same situation and have totally different views. We all feel differently about a lot of things. Empathy gives you an inside view. It doesn't say, if that was me. Empathy says, that is me. So he's a huge advocate for empathy, and he feels as though, you know, our justice system in the United States has none of that. Um, so that was an interesting point to make. So look, if you watch the show regularly, you know that I don't often have sympathy for a lot of people in his position, right? Uh, we, in fact, earlier in the week we did this story of a guy who's on death row and he's, they, some claim he's mentally challenged. I wasn't buying that argument and I didn't have much sympathy for that guy, okay. You read this guy's letter, there's no way you don't come away thinking this guy is not a threat to society. Uh, it, he's in, at this point really well educated, self educated, really smart guy, and making really good points. It's not to patronize him, like, oh, isn't it interesting? Like, I'm not one of those liberals who's like, oh my God, he's on death row and he wrote a letter, okay? No, 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 this is an excellent letter. And the reason I say that in this context is because he's right. The most important thing is in order to make the proper decisions is empathy, because it's not a matter of being emotional about a case, right? Mm -hmm. It's a matter of saying, hey, what would be fair is if it applied to me. If that happened to me, this here's what I would want to happen, right? Exactly. And in a lot of ways, it's the golden rule, logically so. And, and he, for example, he mentions in the piece Chuck Colson, who used to be in the Nixon White House. And then when he, he, and he used to be tough on crime. And then he got busted and went to prison, and all of a sudden he's like, oh my God. I didn't realize prison was so tough and we were so wrong to people in prison. And he set up prison ministries. By the way, Chuck Colson, as he points out here in this letter, predicted in the 1980s that prison was getting so out of control uh, that by the year 2000 there'd be a million people in prison. Well, today there are two million people in prison. So he does talk about the justice system. He says the justice system is truly broken beyond repair. And the sad part is there's no way to start over. Improvements can be made. If honest people stand up, I think they will be made over time. Um, so what, what I really like about his letter is he talks a little bit about the private prison industry and how locking people away has now become profitable. That's why you have tough on crime legislation being proposed and it passes. A lot of times the private prison industry will lock to ensure that those types of laws pass so we can funnel more and more people within that system and then taxpayers pay for their business model. They're not, they're not really private. He, he made great points there. Before we get to that, I just want to say one thing about the last comment you made. Mm -hmm. he, he said there that, well, you know, things could get better if we take the right direction. And I, honestly, as I'm reading it, I, I was skeptical of that. I was like, come on, man, really? The prison system in America is so bad, it's going to get better? Then he uh, said, Thoreau proposed that one honest man could morally regenerate an entire society. I was like, damn. Okay, I'm like, and it gave me a little bit of hope. Like, I'm reading, I'm like, hey, you know what? Maybe Thoreau is right. Maybe he's right. And then he said, a man once said that revolution comes when you inform people of their rights. That man was Martin Luther King Jr. 
right? Mm -hmm. And that's what he's doing here. He's telling us what the problem is, and he's saying, now, look, you never know what ripples that causes. So look about what he says about the private prison industry here. Yeah, and I, I love I love that he addresses the private prison industry, and he talks about the type of slave labor that happens behind bars, right? So let me tell you what he said about that. If a prisoner refuses to work and be a slave, they will do their time in isolation as a punishment. You have thousands of people with a lot of prison time that have no choice but to make money for the government or live in isolation. The effects of prison isolation literally drive people crazy. That is such an important important point to make, right? Because what we are seeing when it comes to labor in the United States is organizations like ALEC lobby to make sure that unions go away and certain jobs that the average American works for and makes decent money in now get shifted to the private prison industry or the prison industry as a whole. And these uh, prisoners have to do the same jobs and get paid virtually nothing for it. And if you disagree with it, well, they're going to put you in isolation and make you crazy. By the way, isolation, there needs to be a law passed, a federal law. The only time you get to put someone in isolation is if they are a threat to other prisoners. Okay, yeah, if they are dangerous. significantly danger. so. Yeah. Look, it, they were taken away too lightly, solitary confinement. So uh, there's two elements of this uh, privatizing, right? One is they privatize the prisons in the first place, which gives them an incentive to put more people in prison because they're going to profit off of it. Then the second part is the corporations that make the prisoners do stuff for them at an incredibly low rates, and they're in prison, so they, they don't really have a choice. And if they say no, then they get solitary confinement and honestly what it reminded me of is in some recent movies if you've seen if slaves dis did something that was disobedient they would get put in a hole okay and so that's literally what we're doing to these guys okay now you might say oh I have no sympathy for him okay but he says look even if it's not me it's not a guy in a death row a lot of guys are in here for nonviolent offenses and if you don't work a as a slave for almost no money then you get put in the worst possible situation solitary yes. confinement where you're going to lose your mind here's another great quote from him he said it's not about crime and punishment it's about crime and profit yeah. And that's exactly right with our system right now. Like he, he talks about it so perfectly. The other side of the coin is there are those in the corporate world making money off prisoners. So the longer they're in prison, the more money is being made. It's not about crime and punishment, it's about crime and profit. It's so it's so true. And you know, oftentimes you get the perspective of journalists that do their research on the private prison industry, but very rarely do you get the perspective of people that are within that system, that are victims of that system. And I'm not saying that, you know, he's a victim. He committed a crime, he was convicted, he has to face the consequences of that, even though I do not agree with the death penalty. But the reality is there's so many people behind bars right now for nonviolent offenses. Some of them are serving sentences that will destroy their lives. They'll get out at some point, but there's no recovering from it. And it's all because we want to ensure that these freaking corporations make as much money as possible. It's disgusting. One more thing that he points out about the incentive system, right? He says, how can those that invest in prisons make money if people have sentences that will allow them to return to free society? In other words, they don't want to rehabilitate you in prison because if you did, you might not return to prison. <laughs> okay, and they make money when you come back into prison. The private prisons make the money, and the corp and the companies that profit off of the basically nearly free labor profit off of it. So they don't want to rehabilitate you. They want to keep you in that system. How do you think we got to two million people in prison? You think that was just an accident? You think it's just because we're getting tough on crime? No, because people are making a buck off of it. I thought that it was an excellent letter, and it touched on so many other issues within our justice system. He talked about, um, you know, lethal injection and how, you know, originally we were getting uh, the lethal injection uh, from companies, pharmaceutical companies in Europe, but then they saw what we were doing with the death penalty here in the United States. They disagreed with it and they stopped supplying us with the medicine, or I shouldn't say medicine, but with the drug. So as a result, now we are going to other pharmacies that give you a substance that hasn't even been approved by the FDA, and they're using that on prisoners. I mean, he's touching on all of these significant issues. It's a long letter, but boy, is it worth the read, okay? He, he talks about the jury system, and he says, look, they tell you you're supposed to get a jury of your peers, but a young black woman was kept off of my jury. Why? Because she said that she felt that the police were intimidators. But she's like, he's like, a jury of my peers totally feels that way. That's how the police treat us all the time. That would have been a jury of my peers. He said instead, there were no black people on his jury. There was no black people, he said, in the entire court when he was being tried. 
And he, he cites an example that someone else used. He said, imagine if a white person goes in uh, and there's a crime in a black area, and then when he goes to his uh, uh, trial, mm -hmm. um, the judge is black, the whole jury is black. They said, don't worry, we're going to give you a couple of lawyers, they're black, okay? And all the witnesses are black. And you're just a white guy. And they say, okay, hey, no, no, we'll throw a couple of Hispanics on your jury too. Okay, now do you think that white person really thinks they're going to get a fair trial? Is it, would that stand up in any uh, constitutional challenge? You know it in your heart it wouldn't, right? They said, what, you only found black people for the jury? That's crazy. But he says it happens all the time that it's the reverse. It's only white folks on the jury. They purposely exclude black folks from the jury because they say your experience is not valid. He talks about the pastors in Texas that are going around preaching for the death penalty. Now he didn't mention this, but whenever I think about the death penalty and so-called Christians that are in favor of it, you know who got the death penalty? Jesus Christ. Okay, but nonetheless, and it says in the Bible, turn you know, uh, turn, turn the, the cheek, other cheek, turn another cheek, etc. But they don't can't give a damn about that. And he says he he's a religious guy. He says he prays to God every day. Okay, and he said. Quote, the blood of Abel cried vengeance, the blood of Jesus cried mercy. Okay, that's in the Bible. Now, he said people get the death penalty when a jury has judged them to be a continuing threat to society. And they have to actually, in the state of Texas, say there is no hope for redemption for this guy. Okay, if they believe there is no hope for him, then they can give him the death sentence. So now, think about how unchristian that is. Because he says as he, over here, that in itself is contrary to the whole Christian faith that believes no one is beyond redemption if they repent for their sins and put their faith in Jesus Christ. It is the exact opposite of Christian belief. Mm -hmm. Yet there are pastors like John Hagee that he mentions here going all around the state of Texas saying, give him death, give him death, give him death. No empathy, no redemption, and certainly no concern for what Jesus Christ preached. Okay, And I'm not a religious guy. Uh, I care about reason and having justice in our society. And even if you're not a Christian uh, and you don't believe in what Christ taught, you have to be outraged by what we're doing to these people. And to me, uh, what's happening to Ray Jasper and so many people like him is beyond all bounds of reason and decency. And you don't have to agree with what he did and you can, by the way, give him a life sentence too. But it's not about him, it's about the prison system and the fact that people are making money off of turning people into, unfortunately, the modern equivalent of slaves.